If you ever believed even one of these 3D printing myths, your printer's been lying to you. And probably honestly, so has the internet since 2013. Welcome to Baker Build It, the channel where we test and design things for 3D printing. And today we're breaking down 3D printing myths that we hope people stop believing in 2026 or at least get a better understanding of. And if you're new here, now's maybe a great time to follow. Some of these myths sound right, but most of them aren't or they're at least a little inaccurate. The first myth. Let's start with the king of bad advice, infill equals stronger prints. Infill does not automatically make your print stronger. The outside wall is the first place your prints fail. The infill, it's sort of emotional support plastic. Infill mostly keeps the walls from collapsing in, sort of like a bad souffle. The strength lives in the walls. Now, not to say that infill can't add to the strength, but once you also pump up your infill, probably past about 40%, it has really no effect on your print. We did quite a few tests on infill videos and I will link them in the description below. Breaking up infill is like packing a box with styrofoam peanuts and expecting it to survive a drop kick. Here's the tip, add walls, not stuffing. Myth two, smaller nozzles equal better quality. A smaller nozzle does not automatically guarantee a better quality of your print. Depending on your printer, a badly tuned 0.4 millimeter nozzle can easily lose to a finely tuned 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And the same thing goes for 0.2 versus 0.4. They'll just add more time to your print. Bigger nozzles can push more plastic, and more plastic actually means better layer adhesion and fewer tears. Most people aren't printing museum quality miniatures or even prints. They're printing things like brackets, mounts, and things that may immediately be dropped on concrete. Think about it this way, if nozzle size was automatically gonna fit your quality, why would printer slicers have settings? Now, if your smaller nozzle was tuned, as well as your bigger nozzle, absolutely your smaller nozzle would perform better on your print to have a higher quality looking print. Myth three, textures don't automatically remove layer lines. Now I know in one of our last videos, I showed you the top of a goblin head and you can see most of the layers look like they had disappeared. They don't really remove them, they hide them. There's a big difference. If your layer lines are bad enough, even adding texture will just make you have a layer line with texture. Textures work best at hiding layer lines when the print is already decent. They help break up light, add variation, and sort of help trick the human eye to the quality of the print, pretty much hiding the layer line. But they don't fix bad settings. This is like putting wallpaper over a cracked wall. It may look nice from far away, but when you get close up, you could actually see the crack through the wallpaper. You gotta think about it like this, texture is seasoning, not structural engineering. Myth four, PLA is weak. As new materials come out, PLA has gotten a really unfair reputation. PLA is not weak, it's stiff. For instance, PETG is more flexible and bendable. PLA will snap. That doesn't mean PLA is bad, it just means PLA fails, honestly. PLA can hold its shape extremely well. Most broken PLA prints weren't weak, they were just doing a job that PLA didn't apply for. PLA could be a great filament if you're making toys or flexies, it's super beginner friendly, and it is relatively inexpensive in comparison to some of the other filaments available. Pretty much any printer out there can handle PLA, so you don't need to change or upgrade your printer. Myth five, auto calibration fixes everything. Don't get me wrong, auto calibration is great and I love it on my newer printers. But it's not magic, auto calibration will get you printing quickly and add consistency to your printing. But flow rates and materials still matter. And your printer doesn't magically know what PLA you bought on sale at 2 a.m. Unless you're using filament with RFID tags within your printer's ecosystem. And by that I mean some filaments have RFID tags so when you stick them in your AMS, your printer knows exactly what filament that is, the colors and the settings and it will automatically adjust your printer for that. Even higher end printers expect you to tune your settings. That's why settings still exist. If this saves you some filament, time, or sanity, 
hit subscribe. And if one of the myths personally attacked you, leave a comment, I read those. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It, and remember, keep on making. Oh, and remember, the difference between a good print and a great print is usually one setting and some patience.